Martel here from the Overhead Athletic Institute. Today I want to talk a little about active warm-up versus passive warm-up. You know, the new fad now is to do an active dynamic warm-up. And there's absolutely nothing against that unless you're putting yourself in positions that compromise your ability to stabilize yourself. It often seems like people try and apply a rigid philosophy to something that shouldn't be. Actively warming up the tissues, physiologically, completely sound. But if you have a passive restriction that's precluding you or inhibiting you from benefiting from a dynamic warm-up or that's created an asymmetry, you also have to include passive range of motion. If you're going to try and convince me that you shouldn't stretch your posterior capsule prior to throwing when internal rotation deficit has been connected with rotator cuff pathology in a whole bunch of research, you know, it's completely understood, then I'm going to disagree with you. So, you know, active warm-up for throwing athletes, I see a lot of different things done, but it's not strategic. If you're going to actively warm up a shoulder athlete, then you need to have them go into hip internal rotation and flexion and thoracic rotation while they go into horizontal adduction with your shoulder, which is why we incorporate it all the time at the Overhead Athletic Institute. But in combination with someone who's got a tight hamstring and it doesn't allow them to get into an active warm-up position that would allow them to create more range in their throwing motion, which could potentially decrease an in inefficiency or makes them more susceptible to injury, I'm going to argue with you all day long. So as a physical therapist, you have to restore the body's ability to move better. So active and passive range of motion or active and passive warm-ups are completely indicated, which is why every athlete that comes here is evaluated and then they go through an assessment that allows us to identify the passive range of motion restrictions and then use a dynamic warm-up specific to the throwing motion that will potentially activate the tissues, get you moving in the direction so that your body moves through a better path of least resistance. We're always going to move through the pathway of least resistance. If you don't understand what you have to do to, to create a better pathway of resistance, you could be spinning your wheels. You know, I get all kinds of athletes from all levels of experience and their coach told them to do this at this university. And then I, I'm like, what, what possible reason or justification can you have for that? And then I question them because my biggest thing is to try and improve the quality of training for shoulder athletes. So an active and a passive range of motion program is more important. There shouldn't be such a rigid you know, differentiation between the two because they both can benefit the athlete, but they have to be done strategically and specifically with someone who understands the clinical implications of doing it wrong and how that can actually be contraindicated and detrimental to an athlete's progress.